We just wrapped our State of DCA report and wow. <laughs> We may have reached all new levels of OMG here at California Adventure. Join us as we take a complete tour around the park, all the lands, all the attractions. It's gonna be a doozy. This is our State of DCA report. All right, let's go. You guys ready? I am ready. I'm ready for another State of DCA report. This one a little different, it's a Saturday. Normally I do these on Fridays, 12.08 p.m right in the middle of the afternoon. So we're gonna be catching some peak crowds, I imagine. As a matter of fact, let's get started with a little vibe check down Buena Vista Street. I gotta say, I think we're in for a big one today. I think we're in for a busy day. I've been shooting B-roll and going up and down Buena Vista Street here for a little bit and there is just a healthy amount of guests <laughs> working their way through the park, man. DCA is getting it done. So proud of you, DCA. You're all grown up. Great vibe here, right? You know, I love doing these vibe checks on Buena Vista Street because I love the good vibes and that's what I'm feeling here. I want to I want to participate. I want to get into this. I want to join the, the DCA vibe right now. stars of Buena Vista Street, or one of them anyway, the red car trolley and Donald Duck. Oh, here it comes. Alright. Hi Donald. Oh my gosh. You look good. <laughs> Very nice. Thanks Donald. And that will always do the trick, man. Getting a little interaction with Donald Duck. I'm okay with that. So we'll start our formal tour around the park down uh, Hollywood Boulevard. By the way, I should note that I recently was on actual Hollywood Boulevard. What was it, last weekend, I think? <laughs> I don't know, it wasn't long ago, but I, it was really my first time being on Hollywood Boulevard proper, like on the street walking around. Hey guys. It ain't nothing like ours. I prefer the Hollywood Boulevard here at California Adventure than the real thing. But I mean, obviously, DCA, that's my jam. Compared to actual proper Hollywood Boulevard. Didn't get to go to Hollywood Studios, but we can here. Still waiting for them to do literally anything with the Hollywood backlot. Oh, look at this. Here we go. Here we go. There goes the monorail. Awesome. You know, some people want an announcement at D23 this year about Tomorrowland. They want a Tomorrowland announcement. They want an Avengers Campus e-ticket announcement. They want something new and fun. I want something done with the Hollywood backlot. That's what I... I would be on the floor if they said, hey, we're going to... We're gonna demo that whole land. What do you guys think? I'd be like, I, I think that would be great. They are getting ready for food and wine. Here's the Earth and Eats booth. Food and wine is gonna happen next Friday, if I'm not mistaken, LA style. Oh, they got the menus up and everything. What do we have waiting for us? The Baja style fish taco and a carnita style pork belly. I think we had that last year. Very fatty, I'm sure. It also comes with esquites, corn, max. Here I am, I'm doing a food review already. Mm, spicy strawberry cocktail. Does that look though like a, like a $17 drink? How do people reconcile? I'm gonna probably buy a couple, but I don't, I don't understand how people reconcile paying $17 for, I'm sure is 
a glass filled with mostly ice. Meanwhile, we'll check in on Micah Sully to the rescue. Posted wait time is 45 minutes. Oi, oi, oi. We're off to a busy start here. I see people bouncing already. We got some balkers. They came in here, they took a look. And they said, never mind. All the way to the back of the queue, all the way. And then those guests that were just ahead of us have also bounced. I heard somebody, the group before them, the folks that were bouncing before, they said that it was going really slow. That it was worse even than the post of 45. So you're seeing a heck of a lot of balkers here at Monsters Inc. Thank you very much, Genie Plus. Meanwhile, back out in the back lot. Things look a little different out here, question mark. Yeah, they've got, they've took out some of the, the high top tables out here and they've replaced them with these comfortable little mini couches and chairs. That's kind of nice. Although I would say that it definitely, yeah, it's the same ones that they've had back here. It used to be just beyond the hedges there where you could get those couch style seats. But there used to, you used to be able to get plenty of seating out here. Lots of high tops and places to sit. Oh no, there you go. Okay. So they've, they're not gone. They've moved them around. Okay. We walked right by some over here by the stage over there. And then some more along the rail over here. Okay. That's nice. I could deal with that. Back. Let's take advantage. It's lunchtime. Let's go to the studio catering truck and uh, the Hollywood lounge to get There's a new uh, sandwich here a new burrito. I should say the Korean style burrito and we'll get a beer and uh, Stop for some lunch real quick before we continue the show. I gotta say It feels heavy. It's very dense very heavy. It's full of all kinds of stuff Like Korean marinated beef kimchi fried rice with bacon Gochujang, cabbage salad, with almonds, <laughs> toasted ramen, and then top of gochujang aioli. That is a wild combination, don't you think? <laughs> Let's go. There is a texture thing there. Do you see the ramen right there? That's awesome. And then over here is the kimchi rice. And you can kind of taste all those textures in there. It's really interesting. And it is a little spicy, but not a lot spicy. Not so much that it gets in the way of, you know, enjoying the flavors of the, the burrito. This is kind of good. Not so sure about the almonds. Matter of fact, I'm not so sure about some of those textures in general. Flavors are good though. Flavors are good. Also got a double hazy from the paperback brewing company. This was 14 bucks. So <laughs> while I'm questioning the $18 strawberry drink over there, I you know I did get right into a $14 beer. Not that I feel like that's a bargain either, but I mean I guess what choice do we have if we want something alcoholic beverage with our lunch? I mean that's good. It's good beer. And that today is the Hollywood backlot. Not bad, lunch was okay-ish. Okay, okay uh, better than okay. Okay plus, I guess. The beer was fine. And uh, I, I, I had a hard time finding a seat there for a minute, but I was able to get a spot. I guess there was a little, there's highs and lows with the crowds out here, as always. There's a show going on. They're doing a performance. You can't see them now, you can only hear them. But back there at the Hollywood backlot stage, there's some performances happening, so there could have been a surge of guests. By the way, did, we, did I just see, yeah, Moon Girl's here again. I thought she was only a temporary character. But there's Moon Girl. No dinosaur, no devil dinosaur, just Moon Girl. You will see her elsewhere in this park. Where else can you find Moon Girl at California Adventure? Anyone? Pint, we're going in the right direction. We make our way into Avengers Campus, taking a look at Mission Breakout, and I get the sense, yes, the walls, the construction walls are down at the Hyperion Theater. By the way, I gotta go check the sign. Ah, it's back to Hooray for Hollywood. 
It was, uh, they were doing Mighty Ducks Day thing here a couple days ago, but it's back to hooray for Hollywood. So no clues as to what's the future of the Hyperion Theater. But actually, here's a clue. The walls are down and we can freely walk back here towards the Hyperion Theater staging area where they queue guests up for the show. No tables and chairs, completely wide open. The only tables and chairs is this little collection right here at the corner. But otherwise, it is completely devoid of tables and chairs. A couple park benches out here, very sporadic. What do you think that means? Probably nothing. But you know me, I'm the kind of guy who likes to think everything means something. <laughs> so I think that means that there is a show coming, that they don't want to get everything set up here for some other purpose because they're just going to take it down again because something else is going to happen. You can't put tables and chairs, for example, out here if you're going to queue guests up for the Hyperion Theater for, I don't know, Rogers the Musical, perhaps? So I'm going to maintain that that is going to happen, and it's going to happen relatively soon, I think. If it was going to be a while, they would go ahead and put tables and chairs out there for guests, because there's not enough places to sit down and eat in most places at the Disneyland Resort. And that brings us to Mission Breakout. Last week, well, I should say two weeks ago, we had a lengthy uh, discussion about the queue here. A very interesting scenario had developed, and we were talking about that, watching Lightning Lane and its effect on standby. Today, as we arrive, Lightning or uh, standby is 55 minutes. We'll just go in here and take a quick peek, say hi to the collector. Hello, collector. And find the back of the queue. Hi. Which is all the way, oh my, <laughs> I should have just walked around the back side because I can see it now. It's back there in the extended queue. That's not a good look. That's a true 55 in my opinion. Yeah, these guys are gonna about ready to head out to the extended queue out there. Back out in front and let's just do a, a quick vibe check here in front of the Mission Breakout and look at the crowds. Check them out flowing in and out of Avengers Campus. What you're looking at here is where the old entrance used to be to Bugs Land. Can you, do you guys remember that? Remember the Bugs Land entrance over here? The really treesy, woodsy looking entrance? Can you ever remember a time when you saw crowds like that flowing in and out of Bugs Land? Because I certainly cannot. I don't recall there ever, not in my life, not ever once that I see groups like that. It just was never the case. It never happened. Right here is where Flix Flyers would have been. And then Francis's Ladybug Boogie over there, approximately where the Avengers campus, or the Avengers building is, they're the head headquarters. But you never would have seen crowds like this on its best day at Bugs Land. You can talk about the merits of whether or not Avengers campus is a better, or a better land than Bugs Land, if it's your cup of tea or not, you know? Like, that's fine. But you can't argue with the mathematical victory. <laughs> I got, hey, what are you guys doing? You're still here? The food, the, the alcohol, the merchandise, the characters, everything. There's more of it and it's better than it was during Bugs Land's era. Now I will say that there was a cost. There was an expense for that. And that cost was things for the whole family to do, things for kids to do. I, I mean, kids can ride web slingers, but I guess they like web slingers, they do, and you can, the kids can see this Doctor Strange show, kids like Avengers, but certainly this, is, this was one of those places that was just for kids, and you know, I, I, I do think that theme parks need to do more of that, theme parks need to do more things for the whole family, and perhaps that's why they made the attraction they did at web slingers, rather than something more grand, because people would like to complain that uh, uh, hi. that web slingers is not a very good attraction. That it doesn't have thrills, or it's not you know it's not an eat ticket. But you know there's something to be said about wanting to make an attraction that everybody could do, and everybody can ride web slingers. The whole family can. That's food for thought, right? That's worthy of consideration when you're talking about the merits of web slingers. Let's go look at web slingers. Let's see how it's doing today. Q actually looks a little bit light. It's posted at 
40 minutes right now. Nobody in the, the little bullpen out here, but there's the back of the queue right there. But I would expect that the, the rear bullpen to be full of guests. We can see through the cracks there a little bit, I can see guests back there, but it's not completely full. And I will say that I, I do see a lot of movement. Generally speaking, if you could tell like a very still queue versus a, a moving queue. There's movement happening in various parts of what we can see in frame here. It's not all everybody's just standing still, resting against the rails or anything like that. You see people constantly moving. I like that. And that this is the reason why right here. There's your reason why. A, a, a fairly empty lightning link queue. There's a few guests in there, uh, maybe 10 or so. Oh, more than that because there's on both sides. But still, I've seen significantly worse than this in the past. All in all, that's a queue that I think I would get into uh, on a day like today, you know, where it's, it feels pretty busy. DCA is, is feeling the crowds a little bit. I, I see a queue like that and I want to ride web slingers. That's a go for me. I like that. And you know what else? Can I just say, Avengers Camps is a, it has its moments. It's a nice looking land at times, especially back here in the Doctor Strange area. This is enjoyable, you guys. If you're even remotely a Marvel fan, this is worth exploring and enjoying. There's some really neat things here, like this thing. <laughs> I don't know what that is, but it looks cool. And the, the optical illusion over here with the, with the floor, and it, you, it works better if you have somebody taking a picture and it looks like you're, oh yeah, you can kind of see it like you're falling down a, a hole right there. If I keep moving like that. It doesn't look like that, as I look at it with my eyes, I don't see what you're seeing through the lens. That's interesting. You know, that reminds me, I asked a question a little while ago on Twitter about whether or not the superhero movie was either dying or dead. Is it, I only gave you two options. Is it dying or is it dead? Some said it's dead completely already. Uh, the, the recent failures of, of superhero movies has, has been very apparent. The last good one was, the last win was Guardians, I guess, Guardians 3. But every superhero movie since then has been a box office failure and some before that as well. Black Panther was a win. Where do you stand on that? How do you feel about that? <laughs> was, did, event, did they build Avengers at the absolute peak of Marvel hype and they had nowhere to go but down? because I still feel like I, I enjoy that in there. That, that's fun. I, I like seeing Iron Man and Captain America and all those characters. I like seeing them, but we're not gonna see them again in theaters. Does that have an impact on your ability to enjoy Avengers Campus? I actually have a thought on that. Actually, I was going the wrong direction, so I'll give my answer going in this direction. Look, there's Black Panther characters everywhere. All you can eat. Uh, so my answer is, Yes, as we make our way through Avengers Campus, yes, there's still plenty of life in Marvel and the superhero fandom in the same way that you know people still enjoy watching Snow White or Cinderella or old Star Wars movies. Just because the Marvel brand isn't what it was, they're not making the movies as well as they used to, doesn't mean we still can't enjoy Iron Man and Captain America and Thor and all that. So yeah, there's definitely still lots of love and lots of reason to come to Avengers Campus, absolutely. Spider-Man is still very popular, no matter what they're doing to, to Marvel. By the way, this is, I asked that question earlier. This is where you can find Moon Girl. There she is right there on that poster right there. Lunella Lafayette is Moon Girl, and she's one of the scientists here at, Aven or at uh, Web Slingers. By the way, look, <laughs> and, uh, we were gone for maybe 10 minutes. <laughs> How's it going? And this queue has filled up. So this went from a go to a no-go very quickly. And that's because people reacted to a 40-minute standby and they showed up. So, you know, you see a wait time like that, I hope you're in the area because if that looks appealing to you, you've got to be in the area to take advantage of it. You know, it's still in the 40-minute range. Actually, it says 45 now. It's still there. But that's not five minutes worth of additional guests. That's 20 minutes of additional guests in the queue. So the, the, the wait board has not reacted quickly enough to what's happening in real time. I make that observation often. I talk about that a lot in terms of the reaction times and thinking in the opposite direction. 
I, I mention that a lot because I want to I want to ingrain that in you. I want to ingrain that into the people who watch the show and to guests who are trying to enjoy Disneyland Resort. It pays to pay attention. It pays to be observant. And it pays to know what you know how quickly things change here in the parks. Spider-Man, very popular. So. <laughs> I just had a really cute interaction with a the family there. This is a shout out to D'Angelo, Lorenzo, and Carlo. They were they they were wondering what I was shooting and if, if they were going to be in the video. Or I don't know if you're going to be in the video or not, but let me just say hi to you guys. I feel like I don't know. <laughs> you deserved it. You were you were so cool, <laughs> D'Angelo. Nice to have met you guys. With that, we will head into Cars Land next. I'm expecting it to be quite a scene in there. The more time we spend here at DCA this afternoon, the busier it feels to get. Look, look at that down there. Prey corridor is starting to fill up. I expect Route 66 to be no different. We'll check in on Major's Junkyard Jamboree. Looks to be a fairly healthy crowd. The posted wait time is 20 minutes and looks to be just about all of that. I, I mean, it's, it's, it's a good sized crowd, but it's not more than 20 minutes, I don't think, especially if they're running both sides. So, you know, Mater's is always a go for me. I, there's very, the only time I ever wouldn't recommend getting on is if they're not running both sides. So, you know, check that when you get here. But otherwise, I feel like it's always a win to get on Mater's. And not just because it's a, an efficient, you know, cycling of guests, but because Mater's is awesome. <laughs> I'll say that every two weeks if I must. Mater's is terrific. Yeah, wow. Look at that. Look at Route 66. Whew. Oh my gosh. Things are happening here today in Cars Land. Look at the queue right here. We'll hang a left. Look at the queue here for Lightning McQueen. It's going all the way out into the street like that. I wonder how long, I've never actually timed how long it takes to cycle a, a, a meet and greet here. I'm gonna guess a minute or so. So if it's, if it's maybe not even that, maybe 30 seconds. So that still would only be about 10 or 15 minutes, I think, to meet Lightning McQueen. Because uh, here's a rule, never be too concerned about a meet and greet queue where the character you're meeting does not speak, it's not a face character. Characters in costume, those meet and greets go by super fast. Uh, so it doesn't really matter how long that queue is. You're going to get your picture taken in no time. But if they start talking, if they're engaging, and they guests feel more likely to have a conversation with the character, then you might have a longer wait. I had to come back out <laughs> to, after finishing that thought to show you the ice cream cones queue here at Cozy Cones. This is for the, I mean, it's for good reason. The soft serve here is outstanding. Right now they're serving vanilla, chocolate, or twist. No specialty items here. Con queso, that's doing okay. Concoctions, I don't know what the current concoction is right now. It's a chimichanga. And then the Fillmore's full and groovy eights. Oh, it's a drink, okay. That's a good size cue right there but there's nobody in the popcorn queue. Nobody wants pickle flavored. Oh my gosh, is this queue coming all the way out here? That's still for concoctions. Everybody wants a chimichanga today. Good heavens. <laughs> it's happening here. It really is happening here in Carsland. Wow. Come back out here to Route 66 and Cross Street to see more guests filling up the frame. Outstanding! Look at this! Whew. Oh my gosh! Do you see this? No doubt about it. That is lightning. Oh my heck! Never in my life have I seen a lightning link queue this long at Radiator Springs Racers. Never. We just talked about this in the last update two weeks ago. Oh my gosh. That's the back right there. 
when I was making that point, that commentary two weeks ago at the last State of DCA report, I had said the longest lightning link queue that I had ever seen reached to about here, Cross Street, and it stopped right here. Now they've got it going around the corner. It would be going down that way if they, if they had been a straight line. Time for me to alert social media. I gotta shoot this for Twitter. So let's take this in, let's do some analysis. We'll take this queue in and then figure out how long it's gonna take for these individual Lightning Lane guests to get to the ride vehicle. Because, it, I mean, it looks brutal for them. But it's probably not so bad. I'm gonna guess 30 minutes. Which, you know, on balance is better than two hours. But you shouldn't have to wait 30 minutes for any kind of paid service, in my opinion. I mean, obviously it's still a win. You're, you're saving an hour and a half uh, by doing this if you have Lightning Lane. So that's great. But <laughs> if I'm paying, I just feel, you know what I mean? Like, there's gotta be, I don't know, man, this is, that's rough. This is a rough situation for everybody. I mean, but especially for those folks that stand by because Disney is aware that a light, an individually paid, not even GD Plus, individually paid Lightning Lane. They paid $25 just for this ride specifically and they're still gonna have to wait a half an hour. So they're gonna, they're gonna put through every single one of these guests. You're gonna see ratios like 40 to one or something like that maybe. I don't know, I'm being, I'm being exaggerated perhaps, but certainly the people who are gonna wind up really paying the price are those in standby. And I have to wonder, like is there, is there a, a limit to that? Is there, is there a limit? When is it too much? 2.30 and the back of that queue has, re has crossed the threshold and made their way into the proper queue area here, so we'll see how long it takes for them to get out. 2.54 and 29 minutes later, the back of the queue is exiting the attraction, so that's 29 minutes all in. Figure four minutes for the actual ride and then three minutes to, to travel the distance from getting out of the vehicle to the queue exit here, seven minutes, so that's 22 minutes it took for the individual Lightning Lane queue to reach its ride vehicle, 22 minutes. And in that time, standby is still 120 minutes, but they have cleared, well, the, the, the Lightning Lane queue that came out here onto Route 66, the back of the line is still, <laughs> it's still within eyesight. And that's the back of the Lightning Lane queue right there. So they have cleared quite a lot of it. They've cleared you know, all of this queue and everything out there on, on Route 66. So I guess what's left is how to process that. Like if you bought individual Lightning Lane, are you satisfied with waiting 22 minutes? I mean, you're saving a lot of time. You're not spending 120 minutes, but you're also paying $25. I would want to be at the front of the line, but I mean, 20, I don't know. It's such a difficult conversation for me anyway, who's eternally optimist and I try to be positive about things. But I'm not sure how I'd feel if I bought, I mean, I wouldn't buy individual Lightning Lane, but I wasn't sure how I'd feel if I did buy individual Lightning Lane. And I, it's not a long time. It's more than zero. We'll keep moving. Luigi's Casadetta tires posted at 30. And you can see the back of the queue right there. That's a 30 minute queue, in my opinion. You know, I asked the cast member who was standing right about here, when the back of the queue was out there, I asked her, is this the longest standby or lightning link queue you've ever seen? I didn't think it was, but you know, I was just curious. And she said, no, no, not at all. Uh, she said, <laughs> now this is kind of shocking. A couple months ago, she said she uh, was managing a queue that reached to the wharf. Through, along, the, <laughs> along all this right here, all the way down this path, underneath the archway, and into toward the Pacific Wharf. Well, she said wharf, another thing about it. I knew what she meant, but San Francisco. <laughs> Can you imagine arriving here at Rainier Springs Racers with your $25 individual lightning lane and being told 
to go wait at Sokyo. <laughs> uh, I mean, and I don't imagine that the standby was much worse than 120 minutes because like every ride, there is a limit. Now, Raider Springs limit is much higher than your average attraction. But I wouldn't get in a standby queue that said three hours. Like, that's definitely a limit for me. It's got to be a limit for other people. But that's what you'd get if you were to get in a queue right now. Or you should, you should get, if you got into a queue where the lightning lane was into where I'm walking into San Francisco, you'd get a three hour wait. That's what you get. Speaking of San Francisco, we've arrived and look at this. Look at they have taken all the uh, queue out here at the Baymax and Hero meet and greet. Just one little switch back here. So it's pretty easy to meet Baymax and Hero these days. Probably easier than it is to get a table at San Francisco. Let's play a game right now. Let's, let's, let's see if we can find any empty table. Like, how brave are you if you're walking through San Francisco right now? Hey, guys. And, uh, you know, you, you, there's two of you. Just two of you. Would you just sit anywhere where there's an opening table? Like, some folks are a little hesitant to maybe get into, you know, one of these middle situations, like right there. Like, how bold are you? I still don't see one. Right here. Okay, no, there's no chairs. <laughs> and it's busted. <laughs> so, I don't know if that counts. Like, where do you sit? San Francisco. <laughs> Our, oh, guys, I've just put my eyes on this view right now. That makes me happy seeing that right there. I love looking at the bridge from this perspective and with the wheel in the background and everything. I also like looking at the bridge from a distance over at the Silly Symphony Swings underneath them in that little rest area back there where we used to do our uh, tip board. Populating our tip board and we'll start eventually with an attraction. Golden Zephyr at 10 minutes, typical. Goopy Sky School is closed. Look at that return time though, you guys. 8.55, almost six hours. Heavens to Murgatroyd. Even longer than it would be for Mission Breakout at 65 minutes standby, which is, what, 25 minutes longer than we saw earlier? 20, and a return time is 7.55. That's almost four hours. No, it is four hours. Almost five hours. Goodness. In credit you guys remember credit coaster for last week? Woo, what a day that was. 30 minutes presently with a return time of just an hour. Well, it's more, a little more standard. But so far, things are pretty busy. Emotional whirlwind, 25 minutes. Jesse's is a walk-on as always. Jumping jellyfish, 20 minutes. Little Mermaid is OMG. Let me turn around and look. So, it don't look good. 30 minutes. This reminds me of the scenario that we've been seeing develop at Pirates of the Caribbean. I've got thoughts on this, but 30 minutes with a return time of 30, of, of a half an hour. Holy heck. You should never have a return time for Little Mermaid. 30 minutes, wow. Luigi's is 30 minutes. Mater's is at 15, so that's down from the 20 we saw before. Monsters is closed at one hour and 45 minute return time for Genie Plus. The swings that you're looking at, or I'm sorry, the Pixar Pal around swinging that you're looking at right now is 45 minutes. Raider Springs Razors has dropped to 80. They, they definitely have cycled all of that queue, but look at that, there's also a 40 minute return time for Raider Springs Racers. That is abnormal. Normally the return time is now. It's almost always now. Silly Symphony Swings, 10 minutes. Soren, almost an hour. <sighs> Guys, it is, I mean, that's Genie, that's Genie Plus. That's Genie Plus. Toy Story's closed also. Return time of four and a half hours. We'll check in on that in a minute here to see if that sticks, but four and a half. Okay, Web Slingers is up to 50. We left it at 40, I think, or then it went up to 45. Return time of four, oh my God. Return time of five hours, nearly five hours. It, it, oh, wow, that's just incredible. 
No doubt about it, the park is pretty busy today. And it is a Saturday. I don't often do reports of any kind on Saturdays. I'm hardly ever in the park anymore on Saturdays. Disney has made it uh, very apparent that they don't want me in the parks on Saturdays and they make it very difficult for me to get here on a Saturday, but I did manage to get this one. So I, I'm not sure how typical this is for a Saturday, but what's happening with Genie Plus today and Lightning Lane Return Times is rare for me. I don't want to say it's crazy or unprecedented, but I, it's been a while since I've seen activity like that for, for return times or, or for standby even as it relates to Genie Plus. <laughs> the, more, the more Genie Plus you sell, the worse it gets for standby. So they're selling more Genie Plus now than they used to, which is making standby even more worse, which helps to perpetuate the cycle of selling more Genie Plus. It's a diabolical system. We've talked about this in the past. It's pretty diabolical, but we're starting to see that come become a little more apparent in the park today. Like what we saw last week uh, or two weeks ago with, in, with Credit Coaster, which we're making our way to in a minute. But that's just, you know, it's just a, one of the many examples that we've been seeing lately. For now, let's just enjoy this view as we approach Incredicoaster Coaster and the Pixar Five, Pier. Four, Here we go. Three, two, one, go! Wow. That's great. <laughs> That's really great. And I love seeing all these people here having a good time and, you know, a full park and lots of crowds. I do love to see that. I just worry. I don't know. I just want people to have a good time. That's all. I just, I just want people to feel satisfied and, you know, okay with their Disneyland experience. I don't, I don't like the idea of people being frustrated and, you know, like they didn't get everything that they were hoping for. Yeah, this scene is nothing like we saw last time. Stand by at 30 minutes. Back at the queue is just right here at the threshold. There is lightning lane though. I can see them from here. We'll go check that in a second. But there's your back of the queue. When we were here before, the back of the queue was all the way out here, and then it was doing laps up there and everything. And it took an hour to get through, which, which by the way, an hour under those conditions where the queue was is actually pretty good. And we saw the effects of that. You, you give us a 60 minute standby for a credit coast for people to stay away. And it didn't take long. It took uh, less than an hour for that queue to drop all the way back down to 20 minutes. But there's the lightning lane queue right now, which is consistent with what we've been seeing throughout the park today. That is a significantly long lightning lane queue, bigger than I've, I've seen in a, quite a while here. Normally, Normally we see a smattering of guests in there, but now I'm seeing a hundred guests. They're, they're selling more. They have to be, they have to be selling more. Well, let me put it a different way. People are buying more. They were resisting before. I feel like they were resisting less. I don't want to say that they're selling more as if to say that they raised the ceiling because it was very rare for Genie Plus to sell out. I can't remember actually, it happened often at Walt Disney World, as, I, as I've observed in the past. But I can only remember one occasion where Genie Plus sold out here at Disneyland. That was big news. So I don't know that they have, or I, I don't know that they have raised the ceiling, that the, they have increased the amount that they're selling. I just think people are opting in more, they're buying more. Because standby has become untenable. But it's not all just Genie Plus sales and Lightning Lane and all that, there are lots of people in the park right now. <laughs> Evidence right here in front of you, in your frame. Difficult time just walking through Pixar Pier. This is, oh my gosh, that's back of Lightning Lane right here. Guys, I can tell already. Isn't it? Or is that or is that Woody and maybe that's Woody and Jesse. Let's find out. Nope. Nope. <laughs> that is Toy Story. That's the Woody and Jesse queue over there. This, or it's just Woody. This is Lightning Lane Maron. Wow. Should we do another test? Should we see how long it takes for this group to get to a ride vehicle? 
Man, do I have that kind of time? I'm supposed to bowl tonight. I got a bowling date. As for standby, pretty standard right there. It's out the door a little bit. This is the back of the queue right there. They're not using any of this, which is great, but that could just be people observing a 60 minute standby and a very healthy, obvious, <laughs> obvious lightning lane queue. That, I mean, you don't necessarily see this from the street, but you can see that and you're gonna get quite a few people balking and doing, you know, just, they're just gonna do a drive-by. They're just gonna walk right by Toy Story and not get in. Makes you wonder how close we are to that if everybody's special, no one is type scenario that some people have predicted for Genie Plus. The more that they sell it, the less valuable it becomes, right? Not that it's a benefit, not that you become, it becomes a bargain to get in a standby anymore because you'll never get in <laughs> standby. The more they sell, the less likely you are to get in through standby. It, you know, the queue will just grow and grow and grow. But then you're just all competing against yourselves. You're, not, you're no longer competing if you own Genie Plus. You're no longer competing against standby. You're just competing against other, and then people just give up. Do they just give up at that point? Do they not, I don't, what would, that, what would happen? Like if we approached that mythical space, that mythical time where everybody is forced to buy Genie Plus, what happens? I feel like that's like the end of the world. <laughs> Everything explodes at that point because standby won't exist. And you just, now it's just $25 extra to get in the park. <laughs> Can you imagine? You know what, and, and uh, actually, <laughs> there would be, <laughs> It would be like it was, you know, 40 years ago, right? Every ride is 30 or 40 minutes. That is a topic of conversation that is worth a lot of really deep thought. Like I want to, I want to really deep thinkers. I want to see what they can forecast, what they can project in terms of the future. It's something that you know. I think we talked about it in a previous episode. Uh, the the social engineers at Disney said. It's not a tenable situation. You'll get, you know, an immediate payoff, but eventually it'll be very bad for business. You can say that, that Disney's catering to the 1%, which has been said, and I kind of agree to that they are, but I mean, look at the parks today, man. People are here, they're showing up, it's very busy. So what is the actual answer to that question? Is it working or is it not? People would argue, I've argued that it isn't working that they're losing money on merch and, and, and retail, or uh, dining. But do we really know? I don't know. Say this, man, it's busy here. It's busy. That's a 30 minute wait time, standby. And it is all of that. No chance that it's less, possible chance that it's more. Back of the queue is reaching the top of the ramp over there. Not ideal. And uh, I don't even want to guess. I can't get in there. There's a, I was trying to go look at what the weight is for swinging. But there's a lot of guests there in front of the board. But I'm going to guess 40 minutes for swinging. And again, it looks to be all of that. Came back to check in on Toy Story and the Lightning Link queue. It's been 11 minutes. And the back of the queue has reached the threshold. They're about ready to cross into the proper queue area. 11 minutes. And I will say that's not really a look that you want to see as a lightning link. That's, you don't want to see guests just standing there like that. Now they are moving. You can see that's the, the queue that's moving right now is a lightning link queue. But you don't want to see stagnant queues in lightning link as a Genie Plus holder. 346, 21 minutes later, the back of the queue just hit their ride vehicles. 21 minutes, just like individual Lightning Lane for Radiator Springs Racers. But unlike Radiator Springs Racers, in those 20 minutes, they were not able to clear the Lightning Lane queue. In fact, it has gotten longer. I haven't reached the back yet. Just hang in there with me. You can maybe see the sign back there, but the queue has gotten longer. Of course, there's an obvious difference for why that is. Genie Plus versus individual Lightning Lane. There are significantly more Genie Plus holders in the park than there are 
those who, you know, specifically bought a Lightning Lane for Raiders Spring Racing. So that queue experienced a blip, but it's not going to stay that way. This queue could. <laughs> Mission Breakout could. Space Mountain could. Now, where was I as we leave Pixar Pier? Emotional Whirlwind. Big crowd here. Oh my gosh. Big crowd here in Emotional Whirlwind. You can't see it, but the post of wait time is 30 minutes. There are just people all over the place. My gosh. Humanity everywhere. The lower queue is full. Normally I'm like, hey, it's always right here. And now, no, not this week. Lower queue is full and the upper queue. Uh, I'd be impressed if those folks got through in 30 minutes. That's for sure. It should be noted, by the way, no lightning lane here. So you can't, you can't blame lightning lane for that queue. That's just busy. That's just a lot of people in a queue right now. Will we find more of the same at Silly Symphony? Full up top, of course, naturally. I would not have expected less. Posted at 15 minutes. There you go. That's about right. It's not bad at all. The analysis continues. That's of note because I might have argued, well, Emotional Whirlwind is full because people are getting sick of trying to wait in Toy Story Midway Mania or in Credit Coaster and they want to find an easier queue to do. So they, they, they tend to float towards non-Lightning Lane attractions during those times, but Silly Symphony is fine. That's right where it should be. Silly Matter of fact, there might even be less. On a busy day like today, I would have expected more people in that queue. But at 15 minutes and a, and a queue that looks like 15 minutes, that's standard. Which brings us to Goofy Sky School. It's really bright out, I can't see anything. I'm very curious to see how this attraction is reacting and it's not well. Not well at all. 55 minutes is the post of wait time. There's the back of Lightning Lane right here. That is not the back of Standby. That's, I don't even know where the back is. There's the back of Standby right there but it's after it's already been, or it's on its, go ahead, it has to go through the entire garden, all of it. All of it. What is your breaking point? <laughs> if I was a regular guest today, I bought a single day ticket, did not buy Genie Plus. I mean, what else are you gonna do? You have no choice, right? Cause there's only a dozen rides here worth doing anyway. You gotta get in that queue. Or you can just ride Little, Mer Little Mermaid. We gotta go check out Little Mermaid. By the way, Jump a Jellyfish looks pretty standard. <laughs> we'll just knock that out real quick. Silly, or uh, Golden Zephyr. I think, oh wow. Whew. Golden Zephyr is doing it today. That's, a, that's the fullest I've ever seen the lower queue. It's starting to come out into the walkway. 20 minutes, it says. Oh, wow. Like, they're just, they're just willing to do whatever. And then, of course, there is Little Mermaid. Lightning Lane. Oh, my God. I was looking for 30. I was expecting 30. I was going to do a whole analysis on 30, but... I don't even know what to say about 45 minutes. I don't even know what to say <laughs> because that's just obscene. I, 45 minutes for a little mermaid? Okay, here we go. We're gonna try this out. The queue obviously is extending outward because where else is it gonna go? It's full all the way in the back. All that back is full. Back there under the sea. And there's a switch back out here, which we have seen before. It's not like this has never happened before where I've, I've waited in a queue. Middle of Christmas, I waited in a queue out here. And that was standby only. It was not, you know, it was a breezy queue still. There was no lightning lane then. Four, okay, so I, the back of the queue, there's a switch back. There's the back of the queue right here. I'm trying, Ringo. I'm trying real hard to be the shepherd. I really am. <laughs> uh, I almost really, I, I don't really know what to do at this point. I mean, the, the horse is dead. The horse is dead and what else am I supposed to do with it? I've got half a mind right now to just keep cruising right through to 
Grizzly Peak and check in on Grizzly River Run and Soren and wind this show down. Wind it down down and then go find Peter and Miguel and go bowling and have a beer. (laughs) That's that's where I am right now. This is just, and it's going to get worse, I think, because we're about ready to kick off Food and Wine Festival, which is going to bring more people into the crowd or into the park. Food and wine. Oh, look, there's one. uh, Craft brews. I want to try a craft brew and maybe a cheeseburger bow or a s'mores caramel tart, though I've had that before, I believe. And a frozen mango nata beer slush. Oh, what the heck is that? I need to know. I'm low key looking forward to <laughs> Food and Wine Festival. I We did everything last year and I really enjoyed that. Got a little, a little buzzed and <laughs> had a great time with Liz. I don't know if we'll do the same thing because that was like a $300 bill. <laughs> so I don't know if I'm set for that again, but I, I kind of in the mood to try a whole bunch of different stuff. Looking forward to that. But look at me, Genie Plus has got me talking about drinking. Uh, what a world. And yes, we will begin to wind things down while I talk about drinking beers <laughs> for the rest of the night, either tonight or next week at Food and Wine Caliente. Peppers, peppers caliente. What do they got? I haven't even looked at the foodie guide. Shrimp papas locus? Did they have that last year? I mean, it looks yummy, right? And I'm pretty sure I had one of these, the Cantarito style paloma. I had a couple palomas the other night. They were quite good. I went to LA, did some hanging out there as well. Oh, it's the same thing over here. Never had a paloma, but uh, that sounds great. At least I thought I never had one, but I think I could have sworn I had that drink. But look at me. Genie Plus has got me talking about drinking now. That's it. That's bad. How about this group of folks on Grizzly Rim or Grizzly Peak Trail? This is not usually a scene you see very often here. People, yes, but this is definite heavy two-way traffic going here. As we make our way down Grizzly Peak Trail, I can't, there's no checking in on Grizzly River because it's closed, so no wait time to check, but I guess a, f- a final thought on what we've just been talking about. I, I still had a great time. Today. Now, I don't put as high a price on hitting a bunch of rides for any given day. I mean, for obvious reasons. I'm an outlier though. I don't know if I can speak for everybody in that regard, but I can say just I'm a vibe guy and I can, I'm, I'm an empath. And it does feel like people are having a good time today. I don't sense any sort of rising temperature. Uh, I had, hey guys, see what I mean? <laughs> I mean, I heard some people like, is that lightning lane or is that, you know, what, what is this? What's going on here? They asked, but there was no like, well, that's BS. You know, I didn't get that kind of vibe. I mean, maybe I'm sure there is some out there and I've been posting stuff on, on Twitter and I'm hearing people talk about it. But when you're here in the park, that is, the difference even at DCA I never have this conversation hardly ever anyway at Disneyland we do a state of Disneyland report it's <laughs> it's hardly ever look at that oh my gosh can you believe it it seems like I have that conversation more often here at DCA and I think it's because so many more of these attractions a higher proportion a higher percentage of attractions here at DCA are on lightning lane and therefore are more at risk of being OMG. But still, it's delightful. I gotta say, <laughs> I gotta say, I had a great time today. I really did. Okay, <laughs> let's wrap here at, uh, oh, I wanna say Condor Flats. You guys remember Condor Flats? I wanna we'll wrap at Condor Flats. Construction walls are still up on our right for the restrooms and Humphreys gift shop. Look at all these people out here. There's a lot of bodies out here, my gosh. A lot of loitering, though. I'm not sure how much of that is... Lo- oh, okay, I found the lightning lane queue. The last couple of times we were through here, we're like, oh, that's nothing. That's not a bad lightning lane queue at all. But we got just another story. Oh. Wow, 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 oh my God, you guys. They are selling so many Genie Plus. I don't know if you're seeing what I'm seeing. I'm not sp- saying it specifically, but that's... The lightning link queue for Soren around the world. Hey guys, 
and it's uh it's just gonna go on forever we're just gonna take this ride out of here and end the show at the back of the soren oh i never in my life i've said that before never in my life have i seen a lightning lane queue that long but let's finish the thought we'll go back in and see what kind of effect this is having on standby i'm just moving the lightning lane queue is i okay there we go oh. it's <laughs> You guys, there's a switchback, first of all. There's a switchback, and it's just deep. It's just deep and deep. Everybody's in that queue, because you know how I know that? There are 15 people. Well, not literally. It's more like 20 or so. There is, this is the, this is empty for California, for Soren, and it's posted at 60. You guys, there is 30 people in this queue, and it's going to be 60 minutes. I'm just, I'm speechless. There's nobody, there's hardly anybody in that queue. <laughs> Have we reached the syndrome level? Have we reached syndrome? That's what we're gonna call it. We're gonna call this syndrome. Or are we achieve, are we, are we almost there? And it's a Saturday though, it's a Saturday. Typically it has been my experience that it's different. Genie Plus is different on the weekends than it is on the weekdays. And as I mentioned before, I'm almost exclusively weekdays these days. Saturday, normally I'm at home editing. But I kind of. Uh, it's syndrome. What a day, man. I couldn't even hardly start shooting my way out of that situation. I had to stop. I was going to shoot the queue again. It was just too packed in there. It's just too busy and too crazy. DCA, man, you did it. <laughs> You're winning, man. You are winning. Well, I, like I said, I still had a great time today. I, delightful to be here in the parks and enjoying this atmosphere and this vibe with everybody. Having a, having a great time. I hope you guys enjoyed too. Uh, stay tuned for more. Hi, guys. As always, we got these and more coming up. Uh, if you enjoyed this show and want to show you support, you can join our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash freshbake. Otherwise, you can follow us on Instagram at underscore Fresh Bake. On Twitter at Fresh Bake Disney. That's Fresh with no E. Fresh Bake. Hey, guys. And on TikTok at Fresh Bake Disney. And until next time, thanks for watching, everybody. We love you. Be safe out there. Be kind to of another. Fresh Bake.